So a vaccine is a medicine, but it's a medicine that is used to prevent things happening rather than treating things when they have happened. And a vaccine essentially prevents a human being from getting a serious and avoidable infectious disease. And that's really important. On top of that, if you think about kind of public health interventions the world over, the most important is clean, safe drinking water. After that, the thing that saved most lives across the globe are vaccines. Infectious diseases can be caused by a whole variety of organisms, including bacteria and viruses. And in a vaccine, you either have to have a piece of the bacteria that, against the disease you're trying to prevent, or a piece of the virus, or sometimes the whole bacterium or the whole virus. And what's really important is that if it's just a piece of the bacteria or a piece of the virus, it can't give you the infection. It's dead. If it's a whole bacterium or a whole virus, what has been done is to make that bacteria or that virus so weak that it doesn't actually make you ill at all. What it does is still stimulate your immune system so that you get the antibodies, but you don't actually get the disease. All vaccines have to have this piece of the organism or the whole organism that's been seriously weakened or killed um, within it. That's the core component. Extra things have to go into a vaccine to make sure that basically it's a product that is safe, deliverable and also storable for a reasonable period of time. But what I can say is that nothing but nothing goes into a vaccine unless it's absolutely needed. It's really a culture in the vaccine manufacturing industry of minimalism. You only put in what you absolutely need to get the effects that you need. Vaccines work by teaching your immune system um, how to encounter the infectious disease, but in a kind of safe way. So as I said, it's either a killed organism or a seriously weakened one. Uh, you know, and what, what that does is it teaches your immune system to recognise the organism and produce the antibodies. And what that does then, after the vaccine's been given, is that for a period of time, and sometimes that's only a year or two, sometimes it's lifelong, that means that when you come across that infection for real in the big wide world out there, your body, your immune system, instantly recognises that organism. And instead of taking um, you know, a month to develop the antibodies, during which time you become ill with the disease, it springs into action within just a few days and suddenly there are your antibodies and you don't get the infection. So the normal time frame to make a vaccine is certainly five to ten years and the reason for that is that you do one small experiment and then you wait and you get the results and then you do the next one and you do the next one and you do the next one and at each stage because these are commercial products made by companies there has to be an investment decision about whether to move to the next stage and then the next stage after that and this whole process can go into months and months and then years and years but with covid vaccines it is clear that we have a global public health emergency on our hands and that even waiting five years for a Covid vaccine if we don't have to is completely the wrong thing to do. And so what's happened is, is that the shackles have come off in terms of investing. Governments such as the UK government have put hundreds of millions of pounds into this deliberately on purpose to try and speed it up. But is it true that somehow the 
threshold for safety or the threshold for effectiveness are different for COVID-19 vaccines? Absolutely not. Those rules don't change a bit. They are in the hands of the professional regulatory authorities who are totally independent, totally independent. In our country, in the UK, it's the MHRA, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency. They work independently and they make the decisions on what is safe and what is effective in relation to the threat that we are facing. All medicines have side effects. That is just a known fact. You go and buy a packet of paracetamol or a packet of aspirin from a supermarket and you'll get out this big piece of paper and it's kind of like an essay and it tells you all, um, all the things that have been noted as possible side effects. So all medicines have side effects and it's the same for vaccines. We know for example if you're um, sticking a needle into somebody's arm they are quite likely to get a sore arm as a result of it. We know there are going to be some signs and symptoms, perhaps a fever for a short while, perhaps feeling a bit grotty for a day or so, that are absolutely going to be um, side effects. Actually, if you have a vaccine and you get side effects, my personal view is that that shows that the vaccine is taking. It shows that it is working. It is not a negative thing. It shows that your body is reacting to it in exactly the way it should to start to make antibodies. Now, for the COVID-19 vaccines, of course they are new, but they will have been typically given to 40 to 50,000 volunteers um, before anyone will give them a license that they are safe and effective. So I'm fairly confident that any common side effects are going to show through in that clinical trials population. And we don't license vaccines that are not safe. It's really very simple. If um, children are not vaccinated, according to the recommendations of the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation, and we don't keep that going in the UK, then diseases of the past will come back. If you um, go home on your journey tonight or your journey to work tomorrow morning and um, you use a bus, use the train, um, I absolutely assure you that you will come into contact with many, many infectious organisms. You can't look at the surface in front of you and say, well, there's just one, one bacteria or one virus on it. There's probably loads. And in other words, what I'm trying to say is that our immune systems meet multiple infectious organisms at the same time as part of normal life. So all that combination vaccines are doing is putting a few of those together in a way that has been properly tested to make sure that they don't interact with each other so that um, actually if there are five things in the vaccine you get a proper immune response to all five not three out of five you have to do that work first and all they are really are mechanisms to make it easy to cover more children for more infectious diseases more reliably and to spare them five needles um, when you can actually manage with one If I want to know about plumbing, I'll ask a plumber. I'll ask somebody who's a trained expert in the area. So if you want to know about vaccines, go to the NHS website, look under immunisation and get your advice from the experts. <laughs>